What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we're doing another My Favorite Fluke Tools. Uh, something that's near and dear to my heart is the Fluke 337. Uh, they no longer make this meter. Uh, the meter that's closest to it is the Fluke 375 FC. So I'm gonna go over it today. I'm gonna review some of the, uh, the features on it and uh, give you a little down and dirty about it and uh, just why I like it the, uh, and you know, it's my go-to, so stay tuned. All right guys, let's get down to the real reason why we're here. So this meter is awesome. Um, the All of the Fluke meters are awesome, no matter what you get. Um, I have uh, a couple different kinds. Uh, I did a previous video, I'll link it above. Um, if you wanna go check out the T5-600 that I own, um, it's also an older meter, but uh, you can still buy them today. Um, I'm not sure if the 337 is available online. I know it's been replaced by the 374 and the 375 FC, uh, that, that basically is the one with the iFlex loop on it. Uh, FC standing for flexible current, blah, blah, blah. I think it can test up to uh, 2,500 amps or something like that. So it's crazy the capabilities of some of this test equipment. Uh, nothing that I work on, but nonetheless, those meters are awesome. Uh, this one compares directly to the 375 because it does have the Hertz option. So you can test Hertz if you need to. Um, some people run in 50 Hertz, 60 Hertz, whatever it might be. Uh, you, you can test Hertz on this bad boy and we'll show you. So another, let's go down through the meter. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, if you're looking into the Fluke meter for the first time and you've never owned one, the Fluke test leads are uh, absolutely unmatched. Nobody makes test leads as good as Fluke. I've been using them for years. Um, I use them in aviation electronics. Uh, that is my background. Uh, and these Fluke Test leads have never done me wrong. Uh, they come on every Fluke meter and they are absolutely awesome. Um, you can get all kinds of accessory tips for these. You can do uh, mild to wild, you can get alligator clips, you can accessorize this. Um, so don't think that you're stuck with this. So as always, these uh, meters come in a nice case. Uh, I always love the cases because they keep your test equipment very uh, clean and you know out of harm's way. So let's go down through it. I mean, it's got your standard, we'll go ahead and take it up here. It's got your standard uh, volts AC, volts DC, continuity, uh, amperage DC, amperage AC, and Hertz. So the, uh, the T5-600 is my go-to. Um, that is a meter that I use most of the time. Um, when I need to work on bigger leads, this ammeter here with the uh, big throat in it is for some bigger wires. Um, and you can, you know, test stuff on switch gear, MCC panels, things like that, where uh, your little, the little uh, forks on the T5-600 just don't go over it. So, um, you know, that's where this comes in, where you gotta go grab this. What I also like about this meter is it does have the, uh, the, the zero button, uh, inrush, and minimum maximum. So that's really cool um, if you had the meter on and the light was on. Um, the backlight has a little bit to be desired on these older ones, but they're still not that bad. Um, I really like the, uh, the inrush feature and the minimum maximum feature. Um, that's something that you don't get on the T5-600. Um, and I also really like this hold button on the side. So up here uh, is the little hold button. So if you're uh, testing something and you're looking at the meter, you can quickly hit hold and you don't have to fumble around for the button and hit hold like you do on some other meters. So that's something that I really like is having that hold button right up here where you're naturally gripping this thing anyways. Uh, most of the time you wanna hold on the highest, um, the highest reading that you're getting. And so that's where that minimum maximum comes in. I really like that feature, um, that inrush is for uh, stuff like lock rotor. Uh, you can get that uh, inrush current. It Inrush only works on current. Um, so if you're looking at a motor starter or something like that, and you're looking at lock rotor amperage, uh, that inrush is really nice to have on your meter, and it definitely will get you that 
uh, that maximum reading right then and there. So let's spin the camera around. I'll show you how that works. I, I built a little uh, jig a couple years ago to help measure amperage on household stuff uh, that otherwise you can't, um, you can't measure amperage on. So let's check it out. I'll show you exactly how the meter works. All right, guys, first and foremost, pay no attention to the, uh, the sink here with the outlet. <laughs> uh, we are not code compliant out here in the garage. So I've rigged up this little extension cord. Um, it basically said so you have exposed wires so you can test the amperage on, um, on any of your household appliances. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what I mean by inrush, uh, inrush amperage. So basically we hit inrush here. Um, I have this hooked up to a little pancake compressor. Uh, I'll be able to show you the inrush amperage uh, here from lock rotor. So let's go ahead and test it out. All right, so that was able to show us the uh, inrush or the lock rotor uh, amperage, 77.2. So very, very, um, very, very uh, accurate piece of uh, test equipment. I always love Fluke for that. So let's go over here to Hertz. Um, this is a feature that you're gonna pick up on the 375 instead of the 374, you get the Hertz. Um, I ha never really have, um, Rambo, quit chasing your tail. Um, I never really have a problem uh, where I'm trying to troubleshoot Hertz, um, but you know the frequency is sometimes important. So if you are needing that, then of course, you know, get you the 375. But here, I'm gonna turn the compressor back on and we'll look at the Hertz reading. Okay, cool. So that shows you the Hertz reading. Um, of course, that only works in your ammeter loop here. I should have got Rambo on video uh, chasing his tail, but I was in the middle of it. I was in the zone, so I didn't uh, whip the camera around to see him. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is, of course, the 337. They no longer make this, but if you're looking at the 374, the 375, uh, they basically have the same options. Uh, I'm not gonna spend $340 or whatever they may cost right now. I think they're upwards of 330, 350. Uh, I'm not gonna buy a new meter for the video when I already have a good fluke that's just a couple years older. Um, this is my go-to when uh, doing some of those bigger projects when I need the big ammeter clamp instead of the T5-600. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, of course, if you're, ask, or if you're interested, this is uh, powered by two double A's. Um, I think my other meter is powered by a nine volt. I could be wrong, but two double A's keeps this bad boy going for a very, very long time. Um, and it's just all around my favorite meter to have uh, when I'm not in the position to use my T5 600. So I'm glad I got that out. It was rough. I... All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. If you haven't clicked subscribed already, uh, please consider that subscription and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.